All right, good evening, g'day Scott, we're just getting ourselves sorted, Glenn, we're getting ourselves sorted also there, um, we are, g'day Wayne, you're there, howdy Rob, hi Wendy, it's a big, big show again, I can see Kim's popped in, welcome, we're nearly getting set, just a moment or two more and we'll be ready to kick off the Mind Lab show, episode 87. Hi again there, Stuart and Donna. Welcome, Veronica. Good to see you in there. Hi, Ian. Lots and lots of people getting into the feed here. I think we're uh, pretty well warmed up now. It looks like all the systems are just about go. Welcome to the Mind Lab Show, Australia's most informative prospecting live stream. This is the place where you'll get all the tips, tricks, and super deals you need for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. In this episode, we're going to check out the latest store offers from Miner's Den. Nathan shares a tech tip for GPZ owners. The Coffee Bush Kid is back with a top tip for us. I'm going to answer your questions live and we'll give away some fantastic kit to help you in the great outdoors. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal so sweet when I hear that beep beep. Couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. All right, well, look, let's kick off where we normally kick off. Uh, and we're going to have a look at uh, halfway through 2022. And I thought it'd be worth taking a look at how the gold price has travelled over the first six months of this year. As you can see in the graph, the price of gold started off the year at a just over 2,500 per troy ounce. And despite plenty of ups and downs, including a high of 2,800 an ounce in March, the price of gold is currently sitting at 2,634. This is just a few dollars less than was last week and up around $130 per troy ounce on what it was uh, at the start of 2022. Based on these numbers, you can see that gold is heading in the right direction and although the peaks and troughs have been a little hard to predict. As always, we'll be keeping an eye on the gold price and keep you updated here on the Mine Lab Show. Now look, uh, we're up to our events again and shows and expos and things. And Miners in uh, Australia attended the Great Outdoors and 4x4 Expo last weekend in Mildura. And we showcased uh, the range of Mine Lab products to a number of people who wanted to learn a little more about the hobby of metal detecting. During the show, we ran a raffle and we'll announce the winner on next week's show. Now look, there's a couple of pictures you saw there from the event. So July sees the team, uh, well, the Minus 10 team heading off to Sydney for the Sydney 4x4 show and then off to Adelaide. So the 4x4, it's a national 4x4 show. It's at Sydney Olympic Park. This is on from Friday the 22nd, Saturday the 23rd and Sunday the 24th of July. It kicks off at 9am and goes through to 5pm uh, on the Friday and Saturday and then on the Sunday it's 9am till 4pm. Look, at the gate, you can get a number of passes here. So you can get a three-day bundle, and that's 45 bucks. You can get a two-day bundle. That'll set you back $35. A one-day general admission pass is $20. Of course, uh, pension or a concession is $17. Children under 16, with a paying adult, are free. As soon as we finish that one, uh, we head straight into Adelaide for the Adelaide Caravan and Camping Show. This is on at the Adelaide Showgrounds and kicks off on Wednesday, the 27th of uh, July, then finishes up on Sunday, the 31st of July. Okay, this kicks off at 10 a.m. in the morning and it'll go through till 5 p.m. each day. Look at the gate, adults are 19 bucks, concession 16, and a child 16 and under is free with a paying adult. So lots and lots of shows. If you happen to be in Sydney and want to get out and see the range of gear, we'll have it all there at Sydney, as well as the Adelaide Caravan and Camping Show a week or so later. Mind Lab Certified Training. It's exclusive 
to Miner's Den, and it's the best trading you can get on your Mine Lab high to mid range metal detector. Look, the next lot of sessions are coming up for uh, Victoria in Bendigo on Saturday the 30th and Sunday the 31st of July. Saturday the 30th of July, 9 a.m. to 12, we have the SDC 2300. That afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. on the 30th, the GPZ 7000. Okay, Sunday, 31st of July, bang, that rolls out a GPX 6000 training session. It's still a little while until the next lot of sessions in New South Wales, but it should give you plenty of time to plan ahead and get Australia's best training on the Mine Lab Gold Prospecting Detectors. The next date's coming up in Sydney is Saturday the 13th of August, and we have 9am till 12pm. 2300 training on then, the GPZ 7000 training on the afternoon 13th of August 1 to 4pm and of course uh, we've got the Sunday session being the GPX 6000 session on from 9am till 12p uh, till 1 PM. So that's uh, pretty busy uh, with the training coming up there. You can book online. You just simply head to minusden.com.au, click the training tab and select the, select, select the session you would like to attend. Fill in the details. If you're using a free session, please enter the code free training. That's one word. Next, enter the receipt number from your purchase into the field. Done. You're all booked in and we look forward to catching up with you. If you brought your machine from elsewhere, don't despair. Miners Den Mine Lab certified training sessions are still available for a small fee. Again, head to minersden.com.au uh, slash training and complete the booking form. If your payment is required, one of our friendly staff will make contact uh, to take your payment. Again, you're all booked and we look forward to showing you how to correctly use your new MineLab metal detector. MineLab metal detectors, Miners Den, the MineLab experts, and you'll find one detector per trading session to avoid the confusion that we see uh, in a lot of other trading sessions that are happening there. Now look, uh, another exclusive here to Miners Den, the Miners Den metal detector, well my lab metal detector demo days. They've been a great way for budding prospectors or treasure hunters to learn a little more about the hobby and see what types of equipment are available. These things are free, uh, they go through the whole range of MineLab world leading metal detectors and we give you price points, any special features each unit may have. Once the session has been completed at the local park, you'll have a short, well, you'll have a better understanding of the hobby and what machine you may wish to use. A short walk back to the store and you'll find a sausage on the barbecue and a team of well trained MineLab experts to assist you further. Who knows, we may even get you out digging a few holes of your own. The next session is on mine, the Mine Lab Miners Den Metal Detector Superstores in Adelaide, Bendigo, Mitcham in Melbourne, and Penrith in Sydney. And that's gonna kick off on July 16th, Saturday, July 16th. The sessions uh, start around about 10.30 a.m. at the store. So look, please turn up 15 minutes or so prior. If you know where the park is we're heading to, you can head down there, but we do like to get underway on time. Uh, to attend, all you need to do is head to minersden.com.au, hit up the events tab, or use the link in the feed. Look, last but not least, uh, just a quick update for the stores. Uh, the Minus Dens Metal Detector Super Stores are going to be closed uh, across the uh, network tomorrow on Thursday the 30th of June for stock take. And we're going to reopen bright and early at 9am on Friday the 1st of July, ready for the new financial year. Now, uh, that, uh, still going to jump onto the um, uh, chat, uh, send an email. We'll still try and get to answering those. Corey will hopefully look after as many of those as we can, and uh, we'll try and get everything organised for you. But the stores won't be answering calls or having people come in whilst we're doing stock take on 30th of June. Now, look, uh, every week on the Mind Lab Show, we give away a range of gear to a lucky live viewer on both Facebook and on YouTube. This week we have the Mine Lab Pro Gold Panning Kit to give away. The Pro Gold Panning Kits have everything you need to get started and you'll become an expert in no time. The Pro Gold Kit features two premium quality pans, a versatile classifier, a sniffer bottle, 
a set of suction tweezers, a couple of little glass, well, plastic vials to put your finds in, and also a black sand magnet. Of course, has a nice carry bag in there also, just to whack into, um, uh, put everything in and keep it nice and tidy, stop the car from getting messy and everything like that. Winning is easy. Simply comment in the feed and keep watching. All right, let's have a look at this week's, well, it's a very interesting gold discovery story. It wasn't quite gold, but a young miner was digging through the Northern Canada, Northern Canada Canadian permafrost at what is known as Eureka Creek, when his front end loader struck something unexpected in the Klondike gold field. What he had stumbled upon Sorry about that little eruption there. Uh, well, eruption, eruption, it's it, whatever, it didn't work. So we're back with you. Hopefully we're back live again, guys, if everyone's around. Um, uh, a young gold miner was digging through, and I'll do that section again just to bring us back up there. Young gold miner was digging through the North Canadian permafrost at what was uh, known as Eureka Creek when his front end loader struck something unexpected in the Klondike gold fields. What he had stumbled upon was later be described by the territory's paleontologist as one of the most incredible mummified ice age animals ever discovered in the world. A stunningly preserved carcass of a baby woolly mammoth thought to be more than 35,000 years old. The find has been described as the most important discovery in paleontology in North America. With much of the skin and hair intact, officials said the find the ranks. The officials said the find ranks as the most complete mummified mammal on the continent. The woolly mammoth is believed to have been a little over one month old when she died, and she was stretching out to about 140 centimetres in length. She's slightly longer than the only other whole baby woolly mammoth discovered in Siberia in 2007. Maybe not the gold the miner was expecting to find, but an incredible discovery just the same. Okay, moving right along now, uh, it's time to have a look at some just released information from Coiltech Manufacturing about their new range of gold coils for the GPX 6000, the Gold Hawk range. Firstly, there are going to be three sizes in the range. There's a 10 by 5 elliptical mono coil. And this will be Excel when it's punching into tight spots and overgrown areas. Its small elliptical size will maximise sensitivity to smaller nuggets. And it comes in quite light, weighing at 575 grams. There is another one, the 14 by 9. And it's a great option if you want to get a little better depth and ground coverage, uh, although still uh, light enough to swing all day. It weighs in at 900 grams. Good for heading out on a hillside or something. The 9 inch round coil is the other option in the range. It'll again be easier to get you into those scrubby areas. Being round, it should punch a little deeper. It weighs in at 700 grams, and as with all coil tech uh, manufacturing coils, they are sturdily made and built for reliability. They have a number of features, including waterproof to one metre, uh, two year uh, warranty, uh, they come with a skid plate attached. Uh, they're using high-grade litz wire. There's a strong wind design to uh, maximize, minimize coil flex and damage. ABS merino plastic to ensure all environments. And polycarbonate labels to keep the coil looking great for years to come. There's a pressure regulation pad also installed to regulate air differential and prevent dust and water ingress. Earlier today, uh, Coiltech also released a short promo clip introducing their new coil. Look, let's have a quick look at uh, that now.
Okay, so that was a little clip there that's been released uh, from Coil Tech. Uh, the release date's been pushed back a couple of weeks now, and they're now expecting to drop around about the 28th of July. Um, of course, we're taking pre-orders, and for each coil order prior to the official stock release, Minus Den are offering free shipping. Coils need to be prepaid in full uh, to receive that, so if you want to get on there, we've got a number of people who've already purchased theirs, head to minusden.com.au or check the links in the feed uh, and get your coil pre-ordered now for delivery uh, as soon as they are released. Now look, uh, this week's store offers again, um, we've got one there that I threw in last week, there's only a couple of days left on that, uh, but Minus Den are continuing to deliver the sharpest prices in Australia on the full range of my lab metal detectors and these offers are no exception to the end of july uh, as i said i've thrown in this new offer from doug stone with his gold atlas and i put that out last week unfortunately the um uh, gold atlas of victoria has sold out on that offer so just to recap each gold atlas normally 125 dollars the two left now the gold atlas of new south wales the gold atlas of wa walking out the door at 100 bucks that's $25 off each one of those. Um, all three are going to be on special, well, till the end of June, so it's only until tomorrow night, 12 a.m., that offer will end. So there's the Gold Atlas of WA, the Vic one has sold out, but the Atlas of New South Wales is uh, also available uh, if you want to grab one of those at a bargain price. We also have the Coffee Bush Kid bundle up there, and that finishes again tomorrow night. Like everything I'm talking about on these has to end tomorrow night. So just to recap on that bundle, there's Nequinox 800 in there. There's a 6-inch coil, a Profine 35, a Tiger Blade and Sheath, a Grey Fines Pouch, Prospector Scoop. Now look, the coil, uh, the 6-inch coil and the Profine uh, 35, the offer has proved so popular that uh, we've run uh, not only ourselves, but my lab out of the Profine 35 and the 6-inch coil. So they will have to come out later if you want part of that bundle. Needs to be ordered and paid for prior to 12 a.m. tomorrow night. Uh, or tomorrow, the Friday morning, to make sure you get into it. There's also um, uh, about 15, well, about $1,995 worth of stuff in there. Uh, your low price is $15.99. It's one of Australia's best deals uh, that's available. Only a couple, of, well, day and a bit to go now. There is an advantage in getting everything you need into one hit, and that's that you're saving yourself a small fortune. This deal saves you just under $400, okay? So, of course, you'll still get the Minus Den fantastic support and service from uh, Australia's leading outlet for Mine Lab uh, products. So, if you want to get one of those bundles, get onto it now. The trusted name in Mine Lab metal detectors, Miners Den Australia. Now, the STC 2300 bundle, 4050 price rises tomorrow guys it's got all the standard kit there it's got a pro swing thrown a pro swing harness 45 thrown in with it a mind lab pro sonic a wireless audio kit as well as standard inclusion these days the miners den patch lead and we'll throw in a control box cover to protect the control box as well the six thousand offer um look that's one dollar extra uh gets you all the standard kit plus a spare battery a mind lab carry bag and a MineLab GPX 6000 swing arm. So that one's there. That offer may change tomorrow. It could be varied to something different. So if you want that one, jump on very quickly. The MineLab GPZ 7000 offer, it's only 9799 or 10,799 with two coils. Now look, again, that includes all of the standard kit there, plus a MineLab carry bag, a MineLab spare battery, a MineLab spare skid plate, and the Miner's Den clip-on pick holder that fits onto the harness. As I was saying, for the last couple of weeks, guys, you've had plenty of warning. These prices must rise once we tick over into the new financial year. We're already absorbing a lot of supplier increases. Uh, last chance to grab these excellent metal detectors at absolute bargain basement price. Now, that's enough on all of those for this week's offer. We'll head straight on in now and have a look at a tech tip from Nathan in our Bendigo store. G'day, I'm Nathan from Miner's Den and tonight's tech tip on the Mine Lab show is how to replace the nut, bolt and washers on a GPZ 14 inch coil. So the first thing you want to do is take both of them apart. They should only be sort of finger tight, although sometimes you'll need some pair of pliers. 
So you take both the bolts off, put them away, out of the way. Then you'll want to sort of pull the shaft off. They can be a bit tricky, you might need to pull the, these sort of bolts out a little bit. All right. so pull the shaft off without everything flying away and get rid of all the old parts. Then we'll put the washers on, these little washers we've got in the same spot. They go on the, on the shaft. And there's no real good way to sort of do all this, but we'll try and get it all done without it all falling off on me. And we'll get all the washers on, and then we'll try and slide the bolts in just a little bit. Just to try and hold things on a bit. As you can see, it's not an easy thing to do. And then we want to try and slide the shaft back into place and then push the bolts in to try and hold everything in place. Isn't it the easiest thing in the world to do? There we go, got that one. We'll try the other one. Right, there we go. That's it. So it's worked quite well for me. And now I'll put the two nuts in, or two bolts in, sorry. And yeah. There we go. Well, that was easy. All right, cool. So yeah, that's how you replace a nut, bolts, and washers on a GPZ 7000 coil, the 14 inch coil. And yeah, this has been a tech tip for the Mine Lab Show. All right, well look, congratulations to anybody who's jumped straight in and got into Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt Facebook photo competition. So look, we've got uh, one more day left of June tomorrow for you to get your entries in. Now look, it's a great time to put your entries in. If you've got one you've been sitting on, get it in for the June Facebook competition because for this month, I've doubled the competition prize to a $100 gift voucher instead of the normal 50. There weren't many entries coming in uh, last week. We've now started to see a few entries flow in. So if you want to be in there with a fantastic chance of winning a $100 gift voucher to Miner's Den, all you have to do is take a photo of your finds and uh, put it up onto our pin post on Facebook. Now, we've got a photo here from some car, one of our New South Wales customers who worked his way through five 700 gram pay bags of our gourmet pay dirt. Now there's a nice stash of gold found there. And of course, uh, our second photo comes from Steve, who did very well with some little nuggets from his 700 gram bag of uh, dirt. Don't forget, we have the full range of sizes that Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt comes in. And if you'd like free shipping, you just have to get your order in by tomorrow night. One more day to get your photos in, one more day to score free shipping on Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. Don't forget, post your photos to our pin post on the Facebook page and you could be the lucky recipient of a $100 voucher to use at any of the Miner's Den MineLab Metal Detector Superstores. Look, as I've been saying, Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt, it's no ordinary gravel. All right, that was uh, Pay Dirt Photo Competition looked at. Now we're going to move straight along into uh, this week's story in Coin and Treasure Discoveries. So, an amateur archaeologist have found dozens of gold and silver coins dating from the 6th and 7th centuries in the region of Twent in Netherlands, shedding light on an area whose early history is largely unknown. The site where the coins were found, along with jewellery and pieces of precious metal, was not one where people lived or farmed, but did have a couple of poles which may denote a religious shrine of some kind. The archaeologist who took over the dig following the discovery of some coins said the objects could be offerings to Woden and Donar, the gods that were venerated or variated at the time in the area, which is close to the Germany border. In many cases, buried treasure means that the owners had to flee in times of war and some other catastrophes and were never able to return to retrieve it. But this is not always the case here, uh, according to the archaeologist. Treasure is usually buried near a home built after digging up half an acre, but after digging up half an acre, sorry, around the site, they found no proof of the habitation. 
The coins were also found to have been in circulation for a very short period, making it unlikely that one person buried both the early and later coins, as well as taking the trouble to cluster them around the poles. Quite a mystery, but what a fascinating find. Okay, next up we have the Coffee Bush Kid with a top tip on the Equinox 800 and discrimination. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and today we're going to talk about discrimination on your Equinox 800. This is a magnificent pile of rubbish. When I see a little spot like that, I get really excited. Almost makes me want to take my clothes off and grab my detector and swing with gay abandon. So if you've got a fertile imagination, <laughs> Try unseeing that. Yee! <laughs> Alrighty, well you can see what we're playing in here. I am in my usual field one that I like to detect in, but I've left it open as it would be with factory settings. And if we were to take a swing over all this stuff. Yeah. All the signals are just going off everywhere. It's going off all over the tin. It's just everywhere. You know, you're going to have be hard pressed to try and figure out what's what. So I'm going to show you how to uh, discriminate and be in with at least half a chance of being able to find something around and potentially in the rubbish pile. Right, now to discriminate, move the cursor till you get to this minus nine. And you can see where the tags are and you can see our little flashing one down there. If we keep pressing the plus, you can see that's moving up. We're at one, we're at two. When I start getting into where the bars already are, you hit the re accept reject button and that wipes it out. Go to plus again, accept reject, you wipe it out. Now we are just going to keep repeating that process. If you actually wanted to come back down again, you can hit the accept reject button and then start minusing in the opposite direction. But we want to, oops, let's do that one again. We want to keep going and we will take out everything up to, as this is a bad heap, I'm going to take it to 16. There we are, we're at 16 now and that's cool. We're going to stop there, so I'll just hit that to go back to the main menu. So we've discriminated everything out up to 16. Now I can run over the pile again and uh, it will be a lot quieter, but potentially what your best bet is, is to start off on the periphery of the rubbish pile, and you'll probably be in with a really good chance if there's something there. Now I'm gonna swing over everything again, and you'll be able to hear how much quieter it is. This isn't a, we're gonna keep going till we find a coin thing, it's just to show you that you can discriminate, quieten a rubbish heap down, and you will be able to find the little goodies that may well be there. But if we swing over this now, you heard how loud it was before, and we're going right over tin, keep in mind. You know, it's not that loud. But if we were out on the periphery, right beside it all, it's not Well, that sounds good anyway, actually. Oh no, there we go, bottle top. But you can see how close you can get to things without the detector going absolutely off its face. Yeah, and we're in a heavily tr trashed area. I wouldn't potentially go over the top of everything in the middle because there's just too much there. But especially around the edges of everything, 
you are going to be in with a good chance, more so than people that just look at it and go, oh, I'm not going anywhere near that. Alrighty, so there it is, discriminating in a rubbish pile. So remember, you push and you, until you get over to what would be your minus nine, your, your discriminating settings there. And you can do the plus or plus and minus depending on which way you want to go and the accept reject button and notch out all the stuff that you don't want. It's a great little tip to get into areas uh, where it's really trashy and you will know that mostly everyone won't have been there because they're not going to deal with that, but you can. So there you have it, discrimination. Could be your best friend at times. Anyway, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and this has been a top tip for the Mind Lab Show. All right, well, another fantastic uh, session there from the Coffee Bush Kid. And boy, has he been active on the feed tonight, dropping in all the comments. Well, maybe. From what I know, I'm not sure that his fingers work quite that fast when it comes to a computer. And uh, we should probably uh, thank Viv for, uh, uh, well, being the Coffee Bush Kid typist here on the Mind Lab Show in the feed. Let's move right along and have a look now at tonight's product spotlight. First, we've got a new addition here from um, uh, the makers of the Walco Picks. This is what we call our mini wood pick. Now, I've seen these around once or twice before. I know I've seen it one or two dealers around the place. I've just started to get some of these in myself, and they are a fantastic pick. Um, I believe they're probably uh, one of the first batches I've come through, but um, the new size is called a Mi uh, Walco Mini Wood. So it's essentially the same uh, mini pick as uh, with the steel handle. The wooden handle is a great balance with this pick head and is lightweight and made from long-lasting bisaloy steel and pinned and glued uh, so that your head won't come loose there at all. Now the handle length is 40 centimetres. The pick and hole on the top of it is 23 centimetres by 8 centimetres. Uh, it weighs in at just on the 1 kilo mark. Um, a pick this size retails for around about 75 bucks. It's proved very popular in store. Uh, if you want to get yourself a small pick, it's quite reasonable to ship. Uh, very good if you're using a gold monster, an Equinox, machines like that. Um, this is the size for you. If you're not near a store, head to, if you're not near a store, head to minusden.com.au. Hell, hit the link in the feed and uh, you'll get to see the whole range of Walco premium prospecting picks. So that's tonight's product spotlight, only a short one there. New edition, yeah, very impressed with it. So uh, grab one of those if you're looking for something a little bit lighter to get you uh, up and running and dig your holes out in the gold fields. Now a couple of episodes back I showed a, uh, an episode, well, a couple of episodes back I showed a couple of clips with the, myself, detecting with Dave and the Coffee Bush Kid where we dug a few of the targets found by the GPX 6000, so we did a bit of a comparison there. In the next episode, uh, we also uh, dug a few targets this time, but we found them this time with the 5000. So let's have a look at the results of uh, detecting with Dave and the Coffee Bush Kid and the GPX 5000 targets. Hey, I got gold fever and you wouldn't believe it I'm out chasing gold and I don't want to leave it This gold detector has got me on the run All around Australia it's got me roaming I find a piece of... Well, we're out over this side now and these are my selection of uh, diggable targets. Found with your uh, GPX 5000, yep. the little uh, 12 by 8 on it. Yep. Fantastic coil. We're going to compare again the difference between the two machines on targets that are in situ. And I think that's the only way really to test, is to test it in the ground before it's been disturbed. Yep, that's exactly right. There's no if, buts or maybes then, this is just how it is. Exactly. Let's have a listen and see what you've uh, got on your first one here, Andrew. Just in there. Okay, we can certainly hear that. That's a great pick up with the five. Let's have a listen now with what the six and see what it sounds like. Screaming on that. Absolutely. Uh, 
Okay, let's have a listen again. Still in balance. There's no doubt that's a target. Okay, still a bit of gravel down there, so we're in with the show. Let's have a listen again. I think we've moved it already. I think it's somewhere just up in front of the coil there. Sure we've got it there. Good pick up, first scoop. Sounds like it's still in the scoop. I've got a bit of noise coming through. I'm just going to do a noise cancel before we yep. continue. You can hear that little bit of fluctuation coming through there. That's from the atmospherics. A noise cancel should knock that out pretty easily. Just one second. Okay, we're going again. I don't think so, but let's see what happens this time. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we've still got the sound. Coming through nice and strong now. Not the big one. Isn't it funny how we always take the big one out? And we I do. Hope. I love breaking up the rocks. Very good. We're gradually getting through it. Let's have a look. What are we looking at here? Is that what I'm looking at? I think we're looking at it. Bring over the, just before we flick it, let's bring the camera over and have a look at this. <laughs> this is once again, we're in the whip stick and the coffee bush kid, the apprentice, has just scored this little nuggy. That's all right. That well, is. well done, Andrew. That is a, a great little find. Just tip him out. There we go. Look at that. First piece of gold there found with the GPX 5000. Hey, I got gold fever and you wouldn't believe. Well. That was fantastic being out there with a the coffee bush kid. He got his uh, piece of gold there and I got mine uh, the other week. So uh, both the 5,000 and the 6,000 both found gold at that spot where we were working there. And uh, hopefully the weather will be shining, lots of sun, and we'll get out and do a couple more clips. We've got a lot more things coming for you with uh, myself and the coffee bush kid when we go out hunting for gold. Okay, it's that time of the show when uh, I get to answer some of your questions. And the first one comes from Anthony who asks... Hi Dave, I've noticed almost everyone uses a 5 inch coil on the Gold Monster 1000, so when would I use the bigger coil that comes with it? Cheers Anthony. Hi Anthony, great question. Generally with coils, the smaller coil are uh, the more sensitive to smaller gold, but less ground coverage. So to keep the Gold Monster competitive when finding gold, many people use this coil to target those smaller bits. The bigger coil is best used when you are wanting to cover some extra ground with each swing and get a little better depth. For example, if I was to try and discover a new patch on a hillside, then I would put, be much better off to put this coil on and get that better ground coverage uh, over a larger area. But I generally find that most people tend to use the smaller coil about 80% of the time on the, the gold monster because it's the most competitive coil when hunting for small gold and there's a lot more of that small gold out there to be found. So they tend to get results a little bit quicker. I hope that gives you some idea, but that's when I'd be using the larger coil. But I do like the 5-inch uh, coil on the Equinox 800. Now look, our next question then comes from Eric who uh, asks, look, g'day Dave, I have a GPX 4500 and I know that gold is getting hard to get now. Lots and lots of small pieces. Is there any truth that if I get my detector modified it will be as sensitive as, uh, or, and as good as a six, GPX 6000 or a um, 7000? There is a lot of uh, videos on YouTube, uh, for example, um, that, uh, for example, uh, detector mods. So you can't really find a $10,000 machine uh, for a $10,000 machine, but to modify his uh, GPX is only around $1,800. What is your opinion? Uh, thanks, mate. Well, Look, hi Eric, uh, I get this question a lot and I'm convinced that you are probably better to leave your 4500 in its original form. 
Now there's a few reasons why I say that. Once the machine has been modified, most of the most service centres will not work on the unit should it need repair. Look, while they've spent millions of dollars on developing their products, and when while some mods may give you an advantage on a certain size target, you will more often than not lose on many more targets. You'll also find the machine can also be difficult to move on or sell once, you've, uh, once it's been modified. And I have a little trouble uh, understanding how uh, a dude sitting in a tin shed with a soldering iron can improve on the many years of development that went into uh, that GPX 4500. If you're trying to reach for a newer machine, a newer lighter machine, and get that bit of extra depth, you can consider selling your old unit, uh, or your current unit, and putting the funds towards maybe a uh, second-hand unit, uh, such as an SDC 2300 or a 6000. These are both later models, and like you'll still need to put a little bit extra with it, uh, but you don't need to be out of tune, out of pocket to the tune of uh, 10 grand. Uh, it could be as little as a few hundred dollars extra for an SDC, or a bit more for the GPX 6000. Look, if any of that stuff interests you and you want to look at moving your machine on, we have the MindLab certified second hand site. Uh, all you need to do, give Nathan a call in Bendigo store. Um, and he'll be able to go through it and see whether we can try and get you into something that might be a bit lighter or a little bit sharper on that smaller gold and that would be a massive improvement on what you've got and way, way better than destroying a GPX 4500 with uh, some mods uh, around the place. I, I really can't understand how uh, those mods work and I'm 100% certain that uh, your machine is better off uh, being left in its original form. Now look, don't forget, if you have a question you would like, an like me to have a crack at answering, then drop it in the feed or ask it on our regular Saturday morning post. All right, now look, it's uh, time now for this week's uh, Gold Hotspot, and this is one we might have done a long, long time ago, and we're going to take a short visit to Tipperborough in New South Wales. Tipperborough is a small town situated in far northwest New South Wales, in an area known as Corner Country. Tipperborough is the largest town in Corner Country. The town is known for all the granite boulders which surround it and was originally known as the Granites. The name was changed to Tipperborough, a local Aboriginal word for pile of rocks. Tipperborough was part of the Albert Goldfield with first known gold discovery late 1870s. By 1882, the four townships of Mount Brown, Milparinka, Tipperborough and Albert were well established to service the miners and pastoralists. Due to a continued shortage of water, very few miners were getting gold. They were shepherding their pile of wash whilst waiting for the rain. Others used the act of dry blowing to process their wash dirt. There still exists many of those small dry blow heaps scattered throughout the gold fields. Not only are they a good source of gold, such as nuggets and specimens, but they tell us the story of where the old time prospectors tried their luck. Today, the township plays just as an important role as it did in the past, providing supplies to modern day prospectors and tourists. Take the time to visit beautiful Sturt National Park, Cameron's Corner, or walk the granite's walking track. The town is well serviced with fuel and food supplies. Enjoy a beer at one of the hotels in town. There's motel accommodation and a caravan park. There are also some stations that allow prospectors to camp and detect on their property for a small fee. The Tipperborough Common is also open to prospectors through a permit system. The wide open spaces and windswept hills make Tepenborough one to put on your prospecting to-do list. Ready? All right, well look, guys, thanks for tuning into the show again, and look, I hope you've enjoyed this episode.
It's time to again to see who tonight's winners are. And look, it's uh, I've got a bit of paper somewhere over here. It's uh, look, it's uh, Facebook. Uh, Rochelle uh, Creaser. I think I pronounced that correctly. Uh, congratulations, Rochelle. You've uh, Facebook winner for tonight. So you've scored yourself one of the Mind Lab panning kits there. And on YouTube, YouTube Digger's Dream. Congratulations, you're the recipient of the MindLab Pro Gold Panning Kit. Uh, look, let Corey know your details in the feed. Uh, where you want to post to, if you're near a store, let us know. You can drop it and pick it up. Uh, all you have to do is to comment in the feed during the show. That puts you in a chance to be a lucky winner of our fantastic live viewer giveaway. Now, look, uh, I just want a big shout out to uh, MindLab. MindLab uh, put a lot of prizes up to assist uh, in running this show. And uh, this prize tonight, uh, as many of the prizes are on the MindLab show, come courtesy of MindLab Electronics. So a big, big thank you there, guys. Well, coming up here, it's time to uh, sign off and have a little bit of a sneak peek at what's coming up on next week's show. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it. Before the go, we're going to have uh, keep you up to date, as per usual, with all the happenings around the gold fields in the latest prospecting and treasure hunting news. We'll catch up with Nathan for another informative tech tip. I'll answer your questions live and much, much more. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Thanks for watching the Mind Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. Tune in next week for another episode of the Mind Lab Show.